Happy Sabbath, Shabbat Shalom. Please stop those. Grace and peace multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior, the Lord, that keep His commandments. Hope everybody had a great day today. And hey, it's 2019. Hey, we made it. Yeah, we made it. It's 2019. And because of the rumors you've heard, I'm sure, that it's going to be a great gathering. Because a lot of people say, oh, our 400 years is up. No. Which reverts back to what? 1619, when we came to America, the shores of America on slave ships. Well, first and foremost, Columbus spearheaded the transatlantic slave trade, and that was before 1619. Why Whoa. So, we gotta go back a little further. So, even if it is 1619, there's a lot of things in prophecy that we have to study to show ourselves approved is 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 it already come to pass because we haven't had the war of armageddon we haven't had the great tribulation we we haven't had the abomination of desolation stand in the holy place none of that has happened yet so you know all this hoopla about being gathered gathered for what you can go all the way back to 1995 when they had the Million Man March. All the people gathered together, and for what? Has anything gotten better? No, it has only gotten worse. So that's your approval. And plus, black folks been gathering for forever and a day, and it ain't, it ain't changed nothing. And what you gonna gather together for? You can't, you can't, you can't agree on nothing. You know what I'm saying? Wake up. Wake up, my people. So, I'm going to show you a little bit about some gathering. Because it's funny how this gathering hoopla has been, <laughs> been so talked about that you got you even got people over in Ghana talking about gathering. Talking about us black folks in America to come to come home, to gather with them. Now, it is proven that some, some Ghanaians are true Israel, no doubt about that. But you got other nations scattered all over the world, and we're going to be scattered until the Lord returns, until the Most High gathers his people. So there's a lot to look forward to in 2019. But take heed that no man deceives you, because <laughs> it's going to be some interesting times ahead. But us gathering together, but what the most high said he gonna gather his people at a set time in the near future open up your bible to uh ezekiel 37 and i'm not gonna be long with it today so bear with me ezekiel 37 ezekiel 37 Verse 22, and I'm going to skip to 24. Verse 22, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations. Because we still divide it to this day. <laughs> the house of Israel and the house of Judah, we still, <laughs> we still divide. Can't get together on simple things. You still got people talking about the name. You still, you still got people twisting scriptures, and that go for the Sunday churches too. That's another lesson. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Let's get to verse 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Whoa, is David over in the land now? Is he king over everybody yet? No. Has it happened yet? And they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Yes, because it got a lot of people love to talk, love to run their mouth, but they ain't doing nothing. Ain't that so? Verse 25, and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children 
forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Verse 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. What? A, a covenant of what? A covenant of peace. Is there peace over there in the land today? No, sir. Has that covenant of peace came yet? No, sir. It, says, it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Hmm. Verse 27, my tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Go to Ezekiel 34, a few chapters back. Ezekiel 34. And I'm going to start with verse 24. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. Is David among us? No. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Verse 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace. Whoa, they were a covenant of peace again. Are they reading this book? No, no, no. Is anybody reading this book? Please tell me. And will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness. Whoa. <laughs> Psalm chapter 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's the wilderness. In the future, at a set time. Better get your passports. You want to stay over here in America? In the midst of what they call Babylon? Even though Babylon's the whole world, you better wake up. Before it's too late. Verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. Now skip to verse 28. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Ain't black folks a prey to the heathen? Especially those keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. You see it all the time. That's why they came up with Black Lives Matter. You see it all the time. A nation of people hated by the world. It says, Neither shall the beast of land devour them. Whoa, this is future. And I'm going to show you. But they shall dwell safely. Mm. Are we dwelling safely? Even over here in America? <laughs> Are we dwelling safely? No, we're not. And none of them shall make them afraid. Now, go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah 54, beginning with verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. Mm. Have we inherited the Gentiles yet? In, in, in the book of Luke it says. <laughs> they shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The time of the Gentiles has not been fulfilled. Speaking of which. You know, what what does prophecy say about the ten toes of Babylon? It's 27 countries in, in, in the European Union. It has to drop down to 10. Look, look, look at Brexit. That, that, that was one of the 28, but they having problems getting out of the European Union. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's taking them forever to get out. So, in the year 2019, how long is it going to take for all these other 27, or all these other uh, 16, 17 countries to leave the European Union so it can drop down to 10? Besides that, they haven't built this third temple yet. Hence, prophecy. So, let me read on. It says, they inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Verse 4, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou 
confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. Verse 5, for thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth. When thou wast refused, saith thy God. Verse 7, for a small woman have I forsaken thee. Hence the curse. Because we didn't do what the Lord say do. That's why we scattered all over the world today and going through this turmoil. He said, for a, a, for a little moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Who going to gather us? The Lord. <laughs> Isn't it written? Verse 8, In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, said the Lord thy Redeemer. Verse 9, For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, when we got a covenant God, ain't the true living God that we serve a covenant God? Didn't he put? Didn't he bring a covenant with Noah? That's why we, when it rain, you see a rainbow in the sky to show that he can have mercy on us, so he ain't gonna destroy this earth with water no more, but with fire next time. It says, for this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go forth. Go over the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. Verse 10, for the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from me, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Said the Lord to have mercy on thee. That's future. Prophecy from the Old Testament. Isaiah 11. Stay in the book of Isaiah, go all right back to the, uh, Isaiah chapter 11. A couple of more after this and I'll be done. Isaiah 11. Verses 11 and 12. Oh, it's, it's a little shade, ain't it? Verse 11. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathos and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. He gonna gather us when? Are we gathered now? If we get together now, is that gonna change anything? Is that gonna solve anything? Has it in the past? Has it now? No, nah, because the Lord said he's going to gather us. Now, go right back to verse 1, verses 1 through 3. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Now, skip to verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leper shall lie down with the kid. Whoa! Ain't that a covenant of peace? Because you know if a wolf lie down with a lamb, he going to kill it. He going to eat it. <laughs> Why do you think dogs chase cats? Let me finish. It says, And the calf and the young lion and the fattening together, and a little child shall lead them. Verse 7, And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Whoa. And verse 8 says, And the suckling child shall play in the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice deep. Your baby gonna be able to play with snakes with this covenant of peace. Is babies able to play with snakes now? No. <laughs> the snakes will bite you. Psalm 14.
And I'm just, I got verses 1 through 7, because it's a short chapter. But I'm just going to read verse 7. Verse 7. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity. That's right. As was Jesus. Jesus was also a Hebrew. Why don't you just ask your question? What color were the original Hebrews? I have told you that we don't know that for certain. Then you can't believe for certain that Jesus was white. Just, uh, just a moment, just a moment. God is white. Isn't it obvious? Well, that is obvious, but we don't know if it's obvious. It's just that the images of Jesus that are on prison walls and churches throughout the world are not historically correct because history teaches us that Jesus was born in a region where the people had color. Activity of his people. What? Who gonna bring it back? The Lord. This is book. Read it for yourself. And look, look and let me finish. Look what it say. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Whoa. <laughs> is Jacob and Israel one and the same, right? Are we rejoicing? Are we glad? No. And we got troublous times coming ahead. That's why it's so important to make it to the secret place of the Most High. Revelation 13. And one more after this. Because it's important to learn prophecy. We got these Bibles all around us. Ain't nobody opening them up and reading them. Ain't that a shame? That's why I believe it's in the book of Jeremiah say the scribes, the scribes have labored in vain. They, they wrote this down for us to read and understand, study to show ourselves approved. But it seemed like they wrote it down for nothing. Revelation 13. You know verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns. And upon his head is the name of blasphemy. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. Who is that? That's Satan the devil. Said, and his seed of great authority. And I saw one of his hands as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Uh oh! His deadly wound was healed? Hence, the reviving of the Roman Empire. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. You go to church on Sunday, you one of her daughters. Oh, wait a minute, you got seven day events. They go to church on Saturday. But yet in the month of December, you see a Christmas tree in there, which is idolatry. It ain't got nothing to do with God. That's another lesson. James chapter one. And this will be last. James 1. Verse 1, and I'm going to skip to 12. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greet. Where are they? Are they back in their homeland? No, they're scattered abroad, even to this day. Until when? The Most High gathers his people. Skip to verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Uh-oh, that's shown and proven over and over again throughout the Bible that you got to go through some things. You still got to walk straight, but you got to endure temptation. Then, then the Lord say, he that, in, that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Let me read that again. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. We are in trials right now. He better wake up. Before it's too late. We are in those times now. People better wake up. Wake up before it's too late. Especially Israel. Especially the, the true Jews. Wake up before it's too late. You better read Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy chapter 28. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And who does he love? Those that keep his commandments. Grace and peace multiply to you was a knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the most high God, the Savior of the Lord, that keeps his commandments. Wake up, my people.